folks hope you're okay today we're going to be doing some bible studies now uh for the rest of the evening so hope everybody's okay let's come before the lord lord we thank you for this day we thank you for your love and your grace and father we pray as we read your word that you bless it to our hearts in jesus name amen okay if you'd like to turn to uh psalm 55 psalm 55 So it says, listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me, my thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught at the voice of the enemy, at the snares of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me, and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me, the terrors of death assail me, fear and trembling have beset me, horror has overwhelmed me. I said all that I had wings of a dove, I would fly away. And be at rest, I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Confuse the wicked, O Lord, confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice abu and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raised against me, himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship. As we walk with the throng at the house of God, let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down and lie to the grave, for evil finds lodging among them. But I call to God, and the Lord save me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress. He hears my voice. He ransoms me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, will hear them and afflict them. Men who never change their ways and have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your care on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall, but you, O God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of corruption. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men will not live out half their days, but as for me, I trust in you. Okay. First of all, the cry of the heart, of his heart. Uh, Psalm 51 verse 1, he says, Listen to my prayer, O God, do, do not ignore my plea. Verse 3, At the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. Verse 4, My heart is in anguish within me, the toes of death assail me. Verse 6, I said, All oh, that I had wings of a dove, I would fly away. So, the psalmist is so stressed, he, he, he cries out to God, but he's so stressed he wants to flee away from the situation. Are you like that? That you're so stressed you want to get away from the situation. One writer said uh, this is a prayer for God's help when uh, untreat untreated, uh, threatened by a powerful conspiracy in Jerusalem under the leadership of a former friend but within that stress when he wants to flee away he turns to God if we turn to Psalm 27 verse 9 he says do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my helper do not reject me or forsake me O God my saviour you see, when we're in such a stressful situation where we want to fly away from that situation, we can deal with that situation in our own strength and wisdom by either getting angry at people or trying to manipulate people or whatever it is. We deal with it in our own way and when we deal with it in our own strength and resources uh, by being verbally unkind or whatever way, then we bring problems and make things worse. 
What we need to do is turn to God and say, God, this situation is causing me so much stress, I want to flee away. And God will help. God will not let you down. He knows what you're going through. And he'll help you. Stay close to him in prayer. You see, David, instead of dealing with it in his own situation, or the psalmist, he's, he, uh, and he, 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 he prays to God. Stay close to him in prayer. It's in prayer that you know God's protection and help. Okay? Second point, the betrayal of a friend. Psalm 20, 55 uh, verse 12 to 14 if any were insulting me I could endure it if a foe were raising himself against me I could hide from him but it is you a man like myself my companion my close friend with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked within the throng at the house of God so it was a friend that let him down it was a friend that knifed him in the back but you know something, God knows about that. Let's turn to John chapter 13, 21. John 13, 21. John 13, 21. John 13, 21, it says, after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. John tw thirteen twenty six. Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread. When I have dipped it into the dish, the dipping of the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. And then he says, As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So, who betrayed Jesus? It was Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus. Jesus. Judas knifed Jesus in the back for 30 pieces of silver. But you know something? God was over Judas. God knew all about what Judas was going to do. And, and God was in control. And it's the same with you. Someone's knifed you in the back. Someone sold you for 30 pieces of silver. It might be your wife or your husband. It might be someone in the church. But they have been a Judas to you. God is over your Judas and can use the situation in your life for his glory. Someone who has been close to you, who has hurt you, God will use that so that some way that suffering that you've experienced will be a blessing to other people. And then finally, thirdly, the care of God. Psalm 55 verse 22 It says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous fall. You know, there's a story of a five-year-old boy and his father. And his father was, was a great preacher and he had a bit of a house. And it was about 150 years ago in these kind of cottages. And uh, the preacher was taking his books upstairs from downstairs because he had a library downstairs. He wanted to take them upstairs. And this uh, preacher had these big tombs of theology, the Puritan books. And his little boy, five-year-old, took a great big book and tried to carry it up the stairs. And he couldn't carry it up the stairs. And he st stood at the bottom of the stairs crying. His father saw him, came down, picked up the five-year-old boy, picked up the book and carried him upstairs. And it's the same with you and me. We can't carry those burdens. We can't carry them. But God will pick us up and the burden and he will carry us. Psalm eighteen thirty-five. Psalm 18.35 Psalm 18.35 It says, You give me your shield of victory. You give me your shield of victory. And your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. God has it in control and he will lift you up. 1 Peter 1.5.7 1 Peter uh, 5 7 it says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you put all your burden on the Lord he will sustain you and then finally Matthew 6 25 34 
Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to, your, to, your, to his life? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. My dear friend, God loves you today. He wants you to know that you can trust him, and that you can put your cares and your burdens on him. If someone has betrayed you today, remember God is over that betrayal and turn your cry to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for that wonderful psalm. And Father, I pray for those who are broken and hurt today. Father, bring blessing and comfort to them and strengthen them. And may they know your love today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope everybody's okay. And uh, take care now and God bless.